Good morning and welcome to the Faith for Vaccines National Summit. We are joined here today by hundreds of local faith leaders and members of faith communities across the country. We gather for a common cause and calling, and that is to love thy neighbor, which is now essential to the healing of the nation. For the past year, we have borne witness to the suffering of our neighbors, of our congregations, of our families caused by this virus. And as in the case with any calamity or affliction facing our communities, we responded quickly and extensively. Faith communities have been at the forefront of recovery and response efforts since the very beginning of this pandemic, providing food and shelter to those struggling financially, supporting and partnering with the medical community, and comforting those grieving the loss of loved ones. Now, thanks to the entire global community coming together for a singular purpose, an incredible innovation of our nation's top scientists, we have a life-saving vaccine with the ability to bring this pandemic to an end. Well, we cannot defeat this virus domestically or internationally until all have access to the protection offered by the vaccine. If you had told me 18 months ago that I would be uh, speaking to leaders of faith from all across the country, uh, you know, even the world, because we were in the middle of a worldwide pandemic and had the opportunity to help vaccinate people, I, I'm certain I would have never believed anybody who told me that. The pandemic has brought an economic crisis. Uh, we know that we've seen um, the racial divides up close and personal in, in ways that are um, really reveal uh, so much of the work that needs to be done. This phase is different. This is about uh, person by person, community by community. We need to reach deeper into our communities and double down on meeting people where they are. We know our communities best. We know, um, right. you know, someone in New York or someone in Washington might say, oh, that's an obvious solution. That's great. We know it's not. And we have to use our voices to advocate um, for our communities to make sure that, that this is truly equitable in every sense of the way. It will take all of us working together to beat this virus. With your partnership and dedication, we will beat this virus, save lives, and build back better from the COVID-19 pandemic. So we have a lot of work to do, but this is where faith leaders can help so much because at a moment where people are casting about and wondering who they can rely on for accurate information, uh, they look, yes, to their doctors and nurses, but they look in particular to people they know, uh, to people they trust. There are people out there who have questions about the vaccines. There are people out there who are wondering whether it's really necessary for them to take the vaccines right now. And there are also people out there who are having a hard time accessing the vaccines. These three reasons, questions, motivation, as well as access are the three barriers right now that are preventing people who are unvaccinated from getting vaccinated. We know that there's a lot of misinformation out there as well. About two thirds of people who are unvaccinated either believe some of the myths out there or think that some of the myths, common myths may be right. true. It's become very clear that uh, the work to uh, support vaccinations in our community starts from the home. And I'll certainly say that the litmus test for figuring out your patients and ability to be able to push down misinformation comes from connecting with family and friends who are constantly, you know, sharing things like, I remember the first meme my mom had gotten that said that if you eat more garlic, you can fight COVID-19. When you have to start off with that level of misinformation, you have a lot to really work through. And it's really about inviting people in to be able to share the genuine information and the opportunity to actually dismantle the misinformation that often gets stuck within spaces, especially in communities of color. Being someone entrenched in the community, I'm hearing grassroots conversations uh, from people just not wanting to get it. The faith community has done a phenomenal job, but we still have a large segment of people out there with the mindset of hesitancy. And as much as we know and believe that the information is out there, there is still a segment of people who feel that they don't have enough information. 
one of the the findings that has stood out to me recently is that uh, among the group of people who have not yet been vaccinated, there's a, a fairly large proportion, a large group that are in this wait and see uh, category. They're not opposed to vaccination, but they would like more information. The bottom line is this, we just need to have a better understanding of our audience and how to connect with them. You know, the reality that we're grappling with is twofold. This pandemic of COVID-19 did not create the inequities that we see. It really just took advantage and laid bare. And in this past year, we have had to grapple with some hard truths and realities in our country, coming with a reckoning around issues of xenophobia, racism, discrimination, hate. And so it is, at this moment, both our scientific imperative, but also our moral imperative that we take on both of these pandemics. It was clear to me that we did not have a hesitancy issue. What we had was an access issue. Those persons who were signed up uh, to receive the vaccines, those people who had underlying issues, um, those people who were most vulnerable and the most likely to have long hospitalization stays or even deaths, those people could not get the access, uh, access to vaccines. And unfortunately, those people in, in uh, disproportionate cases look just like me. There are still barriers in terms of access, time off of work, childcare, transportation, or having a trusted place to get vaccinated and that's where you, you come in there are a few places as trusted as you so one of the things which i what we have seen is that many of the underprivileged communities um, they want to get vaccines it's just not only the vaccine that we, we we have to look at the entire uh, scenario in a wholesome manner covid itself is a pandemic has taught us this profound lesson that scripture has been teaching us for thousands of years. Hmm. And that lesson is that we fundamentally need one another and that the bonds of affection that connect us as family and friends and, and neighbors, that these are sources of comfort, joy, but also help. If there is a sacredness, a divinity in each one of us, how should we regard our bodies? How should we treat one another's and one another's health and wellness. In the Holy Quran, the Muslim holy book, God says, if you save one life, it is as if you have saved the life of all of humanity. Getting vaccinated, you're not just keeping yourself safe, you're keeping your family safe, your parents, your grandparents, cousins, aunts, uncles, everyone in the community because you're keeping yourself from transmitting that virus. I come from traditions like Hinduism and Sikhism that tell me that we shouldn't be focusing on an identity of us versus them because our entire universe is our family. It is clear that our nation will not reach immunity without multi-faith collaboration. There is no way through this but in partnership together. It's, it's truly been amazing to see how people from different faiths as well as from different backgrounds and even people without a particular faith have been able to come together and really work in the interest of a common goal. You got to learn how to work what you got and you got to learn how to work together. We called in all of our black and brown brothers and sisters. It didn't matter if they were Hispanic, Hindu, Sikh, Muslims. It didn't matter. Asians, everybody together. We all got shots in arms and we are all doing well. And so we get, uh, you know, our community is made better when we work together. I think the work that I'm particularly challenged by is how to take your wisdom, your experiences and your expertise and continue to share them and to benefit from feedback from the rest of the world. And this will have remarkable implications for foreign policy, not just for domestic policy, but for foreign policy, for the role that the United States plays and exemplifies abroad. You therefore, each of you leads by example and you're not just leading the provision of and the insurance of equity for the communities that you serve, you are leading the service and the provision of equity to vaccines and for vaccines for the world. This particular moment when people are looking about for folks to trust, you have an extraordinarily important role to play. I see science and faith as different ways of finding the truth. Uh, science teaches us about the natural world and how it works. It's a great way to answer questions that start with how. 
And faith helps us go beyond that to understand what the meaning of, all of it is. And so it's better at questions that start with why. And so what I learned about the faith-based community is the fact that we are very central. We cannot be absent. Our community in crisis cannot survive without the faith-based community. It's so important to debunk the misinformation uh, that's out there and with trusted messengers and faith leaders along with medical professionals from faith communities can really help build that vaccine confidence. We obviously cannot be here to create a space of coercion or of forcing people to do something that they don't want to do. But we can remind people and give them the space and opportunity to ask questions, to feel uncomfortable, to think about the ways that they have been misled or misconstrued because of information that's been fed to them and give them the opportunities for an honest exchange. Shifting the narrative from one uh, of politics, partisanship, to mission, to the call to love our neighbor as Jesus would love our neighbor, that with deep conversation, with sharing stories, not shaming people, but sharing stories, we can actually work together. How can we best keep people alive. This is not new for faith congregations because we have been keeping people alive for generation after generation in our neighborhoods. What had to be overcome is the uh, traditional mistrust of health systems. And health disparities was really an issue that rose to the top in this COVID pandemic. And so people look for trusted relationships and the churches, the local churches in your community are trusted, uh, trusted relationships. We didn't just arrive yesterday. We've been working with you for year after year after year after year. We cannot ignore the historical distrust in the African-American community. And instead of ignoring that, we, we face it head on. And we say, how are the ways that we as faith leaders and others can overcome some of this historically justifiable distrust, but build bridges for a more healthy future? Let's be the houses and faith communities that help keep people alive. Wash your hands, still practice physical distancing. I don't care what they say, wear your mask when you're in a, in, in a crowd. You're gonna may have to change the process of how you have communion. And you may have to change the process of baptism. Yes, and you may have to change the process on how you lay on hands and how you ordain. We can do it by honoring in a wonderful way our faith traditions without losing the people who look to us for help. This is a time that we're called to not just save our spiritual lives, but to save physical lives, to help uh, people get enough information that they can make the decision for life. And vaccines can be life-giving and can help prevent disease. And we need to make sure that beyond anything else, we're trying to do the things that aid people, help people, so that we can demonstrate to our neighbors that we love them, that we care for them and that literally we want them to be vaccinated because their lives matter. We choose life over everything else. When you're in partnership with other organizations, not just our interfaith, which is so important, but in with the greater, with civic, uh, the civic institutions and the and the health institutions and all the different kind of institutions, we share infrastructure. You know, from my position as a senior policy advisor for equity on the White House COVID response team, I'll tell you, we're in so many ways following your lead. Our goal is to give you what you need to be effective. Our goal isn't to do a one size fits all across the country because you know your communities way better than we ever could from sitting in Washington, DC. But what we can do is listen. I think that every faith leader has a sphere of influence um, and a platform that we can use to help transition the world, um, not just in this sense, 
uh, when we're talking about combating COVID-19 through vaccinations, but in every aspect of the world. Um, understanding that there's far more that unites us than divides us. Um, and using our sphere of influence and our platform to impact lives. If there's some research that was recently uh, released from the Public Religion Research Institute that says of people who say that they have a faith tradition, even one contact that's faith-based about vaccine education has helped increase vaccine acceptance. And so if you worry about whether your voice matters, it matters. We have the power to save thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people, and to do our best to get all our peers vaccinated and to show we trust the science. One of the things that faith communities can do is have conversations, real conversations with scientists and health professionals so that people who are, are doubting and not quite sure, they can hear from people uh, who were a part of the development of the vaccine, uh, the uh, impact of the vaccine on the body, what to do, how, how and where. Real conversations. You know, you've not only opened up your churches, your temples, synagogues, gurdwaras, and temples as vaccination sites, you have made countless phone calls to get people vaccination appointments. You cared for the underserved, the elderly, and the disabled. And you've gotten your shots first to relieve the anxieties of your congregants and others. You have learned the facts, more science than we probably learned in many years, and you shared the facts while you debunk the fictions. You've poured over detailed CDC publications and figured out how to work with members of local health boards, which isn't always easy. Um, you've Zoomed together for countless hours to make your coalition far more than the sum of its parts. We have to be like that Good Samaritan. We have to stop and accept the call to help. I am as busy as anybody else, but the issues around COVID-19 and the coronavirus and now vaccines is critical. People are still dying. People are still vulnerable and at risk. And so this has to become our priority, no matter what our intended journey was for this season of our life. We have to stop. It's time to stop and answer the call to help. My friends, the call to action of the bishop was to interfere. It was to interrupt. It was to see the fallen, the sick, the ill, and the infirmed, and to be called to action. And it isn't enough just to be about getting over hesitancy and making the case and telling the story. Because here in America, we don't just have a pandemic problem. We have a racism problem. We have a justice problem. We have inequity problems. We have oppression problems. Those problems can only be overcome if we see the reality, the suffering of the people and the systems around them and dismantle them. This pandemic, if it revealed anything, it was the brutal inequality in our systems. God forbid that we have allowed this to happen under our watch. It is the faith community that speaks truth to power. It is the faith community who speaks to the systems and demand that they be overturned, dismantled, and renewed for the sake of the people that they were intended to serve. May the memory of all those who died of COVID, all those who have suffered during these months of darkness and pandemic, may their memories be a blessing. The blessing comes in the form of a vaccine. The vaccine that can be distributed and can remind us of who we need to be when we leverage our relationships to build the interfaith power, not only to get people helped and healed, but to heal the greater society, the greater country and humanity. All those who suffer because of global systems of inequality that now God is calling to us, interrupt, interfere, transform, and heal. 
And that is really what we are all seeking to do, to be blessings in the work of bringing the mission to four, to work with our partners, to work with our networks, and to ensure that these vaccinations can happen and can save lives. And when we can bring science and faith together, I think that is the most beautiful miracle of all. And it starts by here. A lot of what's happening here is happening right. elsewhere. A lot of the lessons we're learning will go elsewhere. I want to say one more thing. I want to challenge you all. You, I learn, I will continue to learn. All of us will continue to learn from each and every one of you. But I wish to challenge you all. I wish to see you work together. Let's do it. Let's do it for the sake of our, the health of our own families and those we love. Let's do it for love of neighbor. Let's do it for our future.